This is an Archimedes calculator, a Model D. It was made in Glashütter. This is a small town in uh, Germany, very close to the uh, Czech border. Glashütter is renowned for its precision mechanics and uh, this all started in 1845 when Ferdinand Lange set up a watch company there. The first calculator company to start in Glashütte was Arthur Burkhardt. They made uh, arithmometer types of calculators, not dissimilar to this one. And uh, yeah, a young man who worked there as an apprentice, uh, he was called Reinhold Pötig, he left uh, to, uh, to join another small uh, workshop uh, owned by Konstantin Fischer and a year later in 1900 there was some kind of bankruptcy proceedings uh, Konstantin Fischer left and Reinhold Pötig was now the owner of this small workshop at the age of 23 he owned his own company he decided to also start making uh, these uh, calculators. He had seen these calculators at Arthur Burkhardt and had his own ideas on how, on how to improve them. In 1906 he made his first one, the Model A, and uh, yeah, by 1915 he was making uh, these, the Model D. Uh, these were very successful and lots of different variants were made. I think this particular one is, is a fairly early one, say around 1917 or 18. It has a serial number uh, on the edge of this uh, carriage at the top. You can just about see it here. It says uh, 3819. And uh, yeah, it's a fairly standard uh, arithmometer type of machine but it has a keyboard. The Model D was the first to have a keyboard. And um, let me show you how it works. So you can simply type in a number, the entered keys stay pressed down and here you can read off the number that you've entered. I've entered 1, 2, 3, 4. On the right is a small crank and yeah, when you turn that the entered number gets added to the main register here and the counter gets incremented. It moves very easily, very smoothly. So it now says 1, 2, 3, 4 and here it says 1. Uh, the keyboard was automatically cleared, so I can now enter another number and add that to the total. So addition is very easy. To subtract, you can uh, flip both of these switches here, and what that does is now when you turn the crank, the number that you've put in gets subtracted from the main register and the counter gets decremented. So if I uh, subtract this uh, 444 again uh, it's now back to how it was before, 1, 2, 3, 4 and just 1. So addition and subtraction is quite easy. Uh, if you flip this switch the automatic clearing of the keyboard is uh, no longer functioning so whatever you input it remains uh, remains here. Uh, let me first clear this uh, this register. Yeah, to do that you have to lift up the, the carriage so that uh, the register gets uh, disconnected from the main mechanism and then you can pull this, this clearing lever to the right. The same for the counter. So I've got one, two, three, four in the uh, in the input, 
And suppose I want to multiply that by 76. Well, first I'll do the 6. So I turn the crank 6 times. And now I'll shift the whole carriage to the right one step. There's a knob on the left here to lift it up. And you shift it to the right. So that now we're on, uh, yeah, on digit number 2. So on these, uh, this, uh, this one in the counter, that's going to be 7, So because I want to multiply by 76. So I have to turn the crank 7 times. The counter now says 76, the, the number I wanted to multiply by, and the result is here. It's 93,784. And uh, yeah, that's that's all fairly straightforward. Um, division is uh, is similar uh, to to uh, yeah to what you'd expect. It's basically repeated uh, subtraction. You can enter a number actually by turning these knobs. You do have to lift the carriage first, and then you can turn these knobs to. Uh, to any number you like. And suppose I want to uh, divide that by uh, 12. I've entered 12. It says 12 here. So uh, dividing this by 12, you start by shifting the carriage to the right until, uh, yeah, un until your row. Uh, your number uh, lines up to the leftmost uh, section of this. So because we're doing long division, we have to uh, subtract from the register, but we do want to count upwards on the counter normally. So uh, this this one that says uh, U for the Umdrehungszählwerk, uh, the uh, revolution counter, that one stays in the addition mode. And this one, the one that says R, for register or result, that one goes into subtraction mode. So now we're ready for the division. So we just turn the crank until, until this, uh, this number that uh, we have here is, uh, is no longer uh, uh, greater than, than 12, the one, the one that we're dividing by. Then we shift the carriage, and now subtract from here until it's uh, under 12. And shift the carriage one more time. Now subtract again until we are under 12. This number happened to divide exactly, because we have zeros here. And it divided, uh, it was divided by 12 and the result was 374. If it didn't divide exactly, we'd have a remainder uh, left here. If you uh, if you turn the crank once too often, you go uh, yeah you go to a number that's below zero. It overflows, and if you do that, a bell rings. That shows you that you've gone too far, and then you have to swap these two. Turn it again. To, re to restore it to how it should have been, I swap these two levers back again. So, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a faff, uh, but uh, yeah, it works. It helps if you uh, keep track of this so you don't have to go to that extra step of uh, yeah, undoing your last uh, turn of the crank. So that was the division, and uh, yeah, so that's basically how this machine works. It's very straightforward, but it's not the most user-friendly machine. Uh, many variations of this model were made, as I said. Uh, so there's an electric one that has an electric motor here, and it has a, a column of keys that 
uh, tell you how often you want to turn the crank. So if you press a 7 on that extra column, the, the electric motor would turn the crank 7 times. Later models were more and more automatic. They'd not only uh, do fully automatic division, but also fully automatic multiplication. They'd shift the, uh, the carriage by itself. Uh, it no longer needed to be lifted uh, when it uh, shifted. And uh, lots of improvements like that. At the, uh, after the Second World War, uh, well, Glashütter is in East Germany. So, yeah, what they did was Reinhold Pötig, he transferred all the intellectual property, the patent rights and so on, to his daughter. And his daughter and son-in-law, they left to West Germany and uh, eventually uh, he, the son-in-law, Ulrich Eichner, he uh, joined Deal. Uh, which was uh, another uh, company that made uh, mechanical uh, items, and, but they hadn't made uh, calculators before. So Deal began to make uh, calculators in 1952 based on the Archimedes designs. Reinhold Pötig, he stayed behind in Glashütter, and yes, eventually the uh, the company became state-controlled and Reinhold was uh, removed from the company. He died in 1955. The, uh, yes, this original Archimedes company in, in Glashütter, that continued to make calculators for the Eastern Bloc. They were unable to export those calculators to the West because they didn't have those licenses, didn't have the intellectual property rights. But they made Archimedes type calculators for uh, for the Eastern Bloc and they did so until about 1960 I think. Eventually that company uh, changed to an electronics company and became part of Robotron just like uh, Mercedes Euclid uh, did. So uh, yeah it's one, one more small thing uh, most of these Archimedes machines will have more writing here. It, it will at least say Glashütter and Reinhold Pötig. Uh, this one doesn't. Um, I don't know why. It may be that this was a special uh, large order for this uh, Überlandwerk Glauchau, which is uh, fairly nearby Glashütter. Maybe they did a, a special order of uh, lots of machines and uh, yeah, they didn't need to have this, uh, yeah, this logo and uh, company name on the front. So that was the uh, Archimedes Model D. Thank you for watching.